2A receptors, and then you image where that radioactivity shows up. These areas of red around the edge are the serotonin 2A receptors. The front of the brain is toward the top, the prefrontal cortex, and this dark red band indicates sort of the concentration, and you can see a scale down here to the left. Red is a high concentration, blue or purple is a low concentration. So these serotonin 2A receptors are concentrated in an area of the cortex, particularly in the frontal cortex, and it's called layer 5. <clears throat> and if you use an antibody which binds to serotonin 2 receptors and you look in the cortex, this is what you see. All these dark areas are parts of the cells in the cortex called pyramidal cells. And these areas are pointing to these little tops. On the bottom you see kind of a round thing. It's actually triangular shaped, so they're called pyramidal cells. And this area on the top that's stained darkly where the 5-HT2A receptors are, are called apical dendrites. And these pyramidal cells are the main computational units in the cortex. So if we think of a computer, maybe the CPU would be sort of like these pyramidal cells. So everything that we think, feel, and experience is processed in some way through these pyramidal cells in the cortex. They're the main computational units. And interconnected with lots of other cells, but they're sort of the central processing units, if you will. <clears throat> now, this is a sort of scheme of the brain the way I see it with respect to psychedelics. So on the left, we have the frontal cortex, and layer 5 is this Roman numeral V, and you see the pyramidal cells. And the sensitivity of these cells is modulated by serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. So over here in the bottom right, and we don't have a pointer, unfortunately, we have an area called the locus ceruleus, or LC, and the RAFE, or R, and the VTA, the ventral tegmental area. And these three areas are primitive areas in the top of the brain stem that are responsible for all of the serotonin, or for norepinephrine, serotonin, and dopamine, respectively, that eventually get to the cortex. So they're in the very primitive part of the brain. They serve very primitive functions. So the locus ceruleus, for example, is a novelty detector. It fires at a sort of regular rate, but if something novel in the environment happens, the locus ceruleus starts burst firing very quickly. So if I do something like this, <clears throat> your locus ceruleus cells start firing really quickly. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. So what do psychedelics do in the locus ceruleus? They don't affect baseline firing, but they make it much, that area much more sensitive. So it fires in response to things that are not particularly novel. Well, if you take a psychedelic and you look at you know, this pointer, wow, that's really cool looking. <laughs> Increased novelty, right? <clears throat> the RAFE, the R group, fires in a very regular slow rate and provides serotonin to the cortex that's related to your level of vigilance or awakeness or awareness. So when you're awake and processing things, the RAFE cells are firing in a regular rate, releasing serotonin in the cortex. When you start drifting off to sleep, as I bore you, the RAFE cells start slowly firing. And if you go to sleep and start dreaming, they stop firing altogether. And the ventral tegmental area is responsible for the dopamine that goes to the, what's mesocortical area of the brain. And dopamine modulates the sensitivity of cortical cells. So if we go back and look at the frontal cortex and these pyramidal cells, their sensitivity in this area is regulated by serotonin, which is constantly coming at a rate related to how sort of conscious we are, if you will. Locus ceruleus sends norepinephrine to the cortex that's providing a sort of novelty signal, like what should we attend to? Should we attend to nickels, or is somebody drop a glass in the back of the room and so we attend to that? So it's sort of helping tell us what's novel in the environment, what we should pay attention to. And the VTA generally is responsible for dopamine in the cortex, which has a lot of functions. Uh, s small amounts will increase processing here. It's related to working memory, spatial memory, and sort of feeling good in other places in the brain. <clears throat> so everything that we experience, except for the sense of smell, comes in and is processed through an area in the middle of the brain called the thalamus. The thalamus is a relay station for all this sensory information. There are serotonin 2A receptors in the thalamus. Wrapped around the thalamus is the reticular nucleus of the thalamus, and it sends neurons down into the thalamus that also gate signals going through the thalamus. There are serotonin 2A receptors in the reticular nucleus, and if you electrically stimulate the reticular nucleus, you can shut off consciousness. So when this is all processed, it releases glutamate into the frontal cortex. Glutamate, or glutamic acid, is the major excitatory transmitter 
in the brain. So serotonin and norepinephrine and dopamine don't cause cortical cells to fire, but they modulate their sensitivity. Glutamate is what causes them to fire, particularly glutamate coming from the thalamus, which is bringing in information about the environment. So serotonin 2A receptors increase burst firing in the locus ceruleus. They indirectly increase firing in the ventral tegmental area. Tryptamines directly suppress the rate of Rafe firing, which would decrease serotonin in the cortex. And uh, phenethylamines indirectly suppress firing in the Rafe. So the psychedelics in LSD do a number of things. They change serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine sensitization or modulation of these pyramidal cortical cells, which are the central processing units. They modulate the processing of sensory information through the thalamus to the relay station. In addition, the reticular nucleus has been called the searchlight of attention because it also lets information go to the cortex that's deemed to be appropriate by some mechanism, what we should be paying attention to. And all of that then changes the sensitivity of these pyramidal cells to glutamate. In addition, we've learned recently that psychedelics cause an overflow of glutamate. So what we have is an increased sensitivity of processing cells in the cortex where everything that we perceive converges and we, pre and we sort of generate a picture of our sensory environment. But in addition, we start releasing glutamate, which normally would be released if we were getting sensory information, but now it's being released in response to a chemical. So we start losing the signal-noise ratio of our normal processing of our awareness. So sensory disruption, and probably at high doses, a block of sensory information going to the cortex. And Franz Vollenweider and Mark Geyer have talked about this a lot, a thalamocortical circuit, which is somehow involved in consciousness. And if you look at uh, neuroscience, cogn neuroscience, cognitive neuroscience, the main focus on understanding consciousness is related to these corticothalamic loops. So we're affecting these with psychedelics. This is all pretty well summarized up until 2004 in this review article for those of you who uh, read scientific literature. <clears throat> and now here's an example of fluorodeoxyglucose PET that Franz Vollenweider did with psilocybin. And these red areas show where the brain is more active metabolically. And what you see, here's a normal brain, a slice of a normal brain. And after psilocybin, we see these increased red areas in the frontal cortex and cingulate gyrus, and also increase in the thalamus. So this correlates exactly with where these serotonin 2A receptors are and suggests that we're affecting this processing of thalamocortical circuitry. <clears throat> so my big problem, <clears throat> how do I do research because I don't do it in humans? I can't do it in humans. So what we've used is a procedure called drug discrimination. We actually train rats to uh, perceive the effect of LSD and to dis distinguish it from the effect of saline or placebo. And so when we get a new drug that we think might be active as a psychedelic, after we've done a lot of other assays, we put them in these rats and they tell us whether they think that we've given them LSD or not by pressing the appropriate lever. <clears throat> <laughs> now when a rat says, I think you gave me LSD, that's a pretty open-ended question, so we don't really know what it means. But that's sort of the best we can